CW. They came to hear what you have to say through CW. So, Father, I decrease so that you can increase. Hide me behind the cross, God, so that they will hear none of me and all of you. I silence all distractions right now, both internally as well as externally, and I say that your people, Father, will leave this place with a rhema word, Father. Confirm your word by the signs that accompany it. And may you manifest the supernatural in this place today. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. Before you sit down, I want you to look at a few people around you and tell them I stay ready. of his home runs. He hit 714 in his career. So in the, the, the third game of the 1932 World Series, the fifth inning, he's on deck because he's getting ready to go up to the batter's box. Everybody say on deck. On deck. See, you, you, right now you're on deck. on deck. You never know when your number is going to be called. But you got to be ready when it is. Stay ready. So what ended up happening was, was, was when he was on deck, there was a lot of hecklers in his ear. Oh my God. There was a lot of mockers. There was a lot of scoffers. They were talking about him. They were saying all type of things to distract him and get him off of his game. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he stepped into the battle box because it was his time to bat. He named his, he named his bat Wonder Boy. Everybody say Wonder Boy. He named his bat Wonder Boy. And he did something that would go down in history. He got his back as the hecklers were still heckling. And he did like this. He called his shot. He called his shot. He silenced the voices that was going on around him. And the reason why a lot of y'all can't move forward in the things of God is because y'all entertain the hecklers. Yeah. You won't silence the distractions that's going on in your mind. And what ended up happening was when the fastball came, boom, he took it out of the field, center field. Out of the park, center field, and they ended up winning the game. Yes. Everybody say distractions. distractions. See, a distraction will stop you from being great. <laughs> a distraction will prevent you from moving forward in the things of God. What is a distraction? It's an intrusion of the mind that tries to cause confusion. And the Bible says that God is not a God of confusion, but of peace, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33. Right. Yeah. An intrusion of the mind is satanic encroachment. You can't be ready if you're distracted all the time. You can't be ready if social media is your God. You can't be ready if that child is your God. You can't be ready if pornography is your God. You can't be ready if drugs and alcohol is your God. You can't be ready if you're getting distracted by all of these outside things. What does it profit a man to gain the world? And lose his soul. Mark chapter 8, verse 36. Everybody say, I stay ready. Stay ready. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 17. We know that Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. Everybody say the weeping prophet. He was known as the weeping prophet. He preach the gospel for 40 years, Steve. He preached the gospel for 40 years and not one person got converted because their hearts were so hard. Because their hearts were so hard, but he continued to stand flat-footed and preach what thus says the Lord. And as soon as one person doesn't, doesn't respond the way we're supposed to, we stop. We tuck tail, but you gotta be prepared in this last day move. 
And as I stand here, my, my assignment today is to let you know the seriousness of you being prepared. Everybody say, I have to stay ready. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is what the father, this is the father speaking to Jeremiah. And he said, what? He didn't even say for the pastor to get him ready. He didn't say for his best friend to get him ready. He didn't say for his spouse to get him ready. He said, get yourself ready. Stand up and say to them, whatever I suggest to you, Whatever I command you, do not be terrified by it. Let's go to the next. By them. Or well, I will terrify you before them. So who is terrorist? <laughs> who are you going to be afraid of the most? The people or the father? A reverential fear. He wants you to walk around with a reverential fear, but he doesn't want you to be afraid of men in their faces, of their appearance, according to Jeremiah 1, verse 8. Everybody say, get yourself ready. Get yourself ready. Raise your hand if you like football in here. Oh, okay, we got a few people who like it. I used to. <laughs> used to. But, 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 see, but see, this is the thing that you have to understand about football. They, 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 told, they, told us, they told us something about football. They said, you know what? I don't care how good you are. As long as you don't know this, as long as you don't know your playbook, you'll never be able to play. You'll never be able to get in the game if you don't know your playbook. And you have to be prepared, you have to stay warmed up because you're one play away. You're one play away from, from, from standing in the starting lineup. And let me, let me tell you something. It's bad when the atheists and the agnostics know our playbook better than we know it. Come on. Atheists and agnostics scored 15% higher on their knowledge test about Christianity than the Christians did. When asked about being unequally yoked, when asked about, they asked high schoolers about being unequally yoked, and they thought they were talking about eggs. They thought, they thought that the Sermon of the Mount was preached by Billy Graham and not Jesus. Wow. This is why you got to get yourself ready. You got to get yourself ready. I had two individuals who were not of the same faith, who knocked on my door yesterday. Everybody said they came to the right house. <laughs> they, they knocked on my door yesterday and, and, and just out of the blue out of the blue they knocked on the door and they asked for my name so you don't realize that there's people having conversations about you and your faith and you don't even realize it they asked, they asked for my name on my door on my doorstep they asked for my name and, and they dressed up really nice guys and, and they was asking me about some things and I sit back and I was just kind of listening and then I gave I gave them a feedback. I gave them a response to the hope in which I believed in. Hmm. We would like to come back and sit down with you sometime. Hmm. I said, please do. See, I didn't run them off. Because the first thing an individual want to do when they're not ready, mm -hmm. man, go on, man, ain't no man. Don't, don't you be looking at me, don't close that blind up. <laughs> y'all know I'm telling the truth. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Somebody go to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Boy, y'all are messy already. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. You started. No. You brought it in here with you. You told me at the door you was hungry. Matter of fact, come here. Come on up here. Come on up here. 1 Peter 3, verse 15. Come here, Jeremy. I got people, I got people in Alvin, I got people in Sugar Land. They, they say, I want to see, I want to see the stay with it God. Because they hear everybody, they hear him on the, they hear him on the internet every week. I want to hear the stay with it God. Now watch this. I want y'all to read this with me. But in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be what? To give a what? Answer to. Let's go to the next. To everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with what? Gentleness and, let's go to the next, and respect. Everybody say, I always have to be ready. I always have to be ready. I always, always have to be ready. I, I always have to be ready. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. Jared, what's the difference between um, farming and ranching? <laughs> On the spot, because you never know when. Mm. Are y'all hearing me this morning? Farming is raising crops, food, corn, soybeans. Ranching is more raising beef. 
cattle, horses, <laughs> sheep, stuff like that. Okay, okay. There's a difference between the crops and the okay. livestock. So when you're ranching, you're doing the... <laughs> you <ready>? Hold on now. <laughs> <laughs> they have some things in common, but that's the main difference. Okay, okay. What's the name of your, your horse? Cowboy. That's what I'm talking about, baby. <laughs> Real. Uh, Grab the microphone. Trusted God, come on, and I trusted in Him, and He gave me this anointing to preach my first sermon. Come on now, come on, y'all bless God for that. Now watch this. They were, they were, put, they were what? They were prepared because it didn't come from their head; it came from out of here. It came from out of here because you never know when you're gonna be put on the spot. You never know when you're going to be put on the spot. Is this making sense to y'all? Yes, so you got to be ready anytime your number is called because you don't know what's going to happen. Did I call y'all this morning? Yes, sir. Did, I, did I call you, Gerald? Did I call you, Rel? I ain't called much. But they had to be ready. And I heard somebody say it like this. I have to stay ready to keep from getting ready. I have to stay ready to keep from getting ready. Everybody say I have to be prepared. I have to be I have to be prepared. I have to be ready. The word ready means to be prepared mentally or physically for some experience or action. To be in a suitable state for an activity, action, or situation. It means to be fully prepared. The Greek word for it is pro-thumos. Everybody say pro. Thumos. Pro meaning before. Thumos meaning passion. I have to be passionate about fulfilling my assignment beforehand. I have to be passionate about fulfilling the assignment beforehand. The Bible says, while people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly. As labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly. As labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. They think they're ready, but they're really not. Because when the father comes, he's coming like a thief in the night. And when he comes like a thief in the night, that's not for the believer, Troy. That's for the unbeliever. We expect him to come. All right. We ready. We got our lamps burning, so we ready for him to come. Yeah, yeah. Our lamps are burning. Yeah. Everybody say, be prepared. Be prepared. There's labor pains on a pregnant woman, Tam, and they will not escape. I, I, I never experienced the, the joy of being pregnant. Thank you, Jesus, that we don't have to go through that. But I have a, a different type of respect. And so what my wife told me, she, she, she got me ready, Rebecca. She got me prepared. And what happened was she said, this is the bag, Parker. This is the bag that I want you to fill all of the baby stuff up with. I want you to have this bottle and stuff right here and, and, and have a different change of clothes and all this different stuff. So I'm like, all right, cool. So we stayed in the, uptown, we, we stayed in the up, upstairs apartment at the time. And so, and so she... I looked at her one day, and she wasn't looking right in the face. <laughs> and she wobbling down the hallway, and she said, It's time. She said, I, I think this is it. And before you know it, I think I, I did a Fred Flintstone rail. Yeah. My, feet hit, uh, my feet was up in the air, and I, I yabba dabba doomed it. <laughs> I yabba dabba doomed it. I grabbed the bag, and as soon as I grabbed the bag, I slid down the thing. And I said, Girl, come on, yo. And she said, oh, I'm sorry, it was a false alarm. <laughs> but you was ready, though. <laughs> it, was a, it was a false alarm, April, and I was scared out of my mind. My heart was beating out of my chest. <laughs> my heart was beating out of my chest, but I was ready. I was ready. Yes, sir. I was ready. I was prepared for it. And whatever come down may, you have to be prepared for whatever the Father has for you. Yes, sir. That's right. Stay with let, me, right. let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Are you ready? Now, wait a minute. Are you ready for what you prayed for? Uh, let me ask you that question. Let me ask you that question. Are 
Let me ask you that question. You got to write that down and you got to ponder on that by the time you leave out of here. Are you ready for what you prayed for? Yeah. Because a lot of the times, a lot of the times we can say that we're ready, but we're really and truly not. You're the only one who's prolonging. You're the only one who's prolonging your process. You want to be a preacher. You want to stand up here and you want to minister. But are you, is your character ready to handle the persecution that comes with you? Stay with it. Stay with it. You, 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 you want all of those different things. You want the new promotion. But can you handle that boss that's, that's a, a, a atheist and they will tell you right to their face, I don't want your Jesus. Stay with it. Can you handle it? Are you ready for it? Are you ready for what you prayed for? Because if you're not ready for it, it's going to expose your character. Lord, I want this new house, but you ain't cleaning the one you got. Uh -oh. Lord, I want this new car, but when was the last time you vacuumed yours out? Watch it, Pastor. I got my car, Pastor. I got to get out my car, Pastor. Lord, Lord, I want, I want, I want. Give me God's name. Don't even finish. Lord, 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 I want this, and Lord, I want that. But are you prepared for it? Have you set yourself down and say, Lord, I, I, I know I want, I need this husband in my life. I need this wife in my life. But have you started making preparations to be the wife? Because it never says he who finds a girlfriend. Stay with it. Stay with it. Amen. Proverbs 22, verse, oh my God. Oh did I say something wrong? I don't think I did, but if I did, oh well. <laughs> he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor with the Lord. It never said who you find a girlfriend. He who finds a woman in the night. He who finds a hype. Listen at you. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Same with the husband. Yeah. Man, I can't let you off the hook. Because you want to be the man, you want to be the man physically and have the responsibilities, but you don't want to take on the role of it. Come on. Stay with it. Stay with it. Come on. You on it? Everybody say, be, be prepared. Be prepared. Hallelujah. Boy, go to Revelation 19, verse 7. Revelation 19, verse 7. Is this word cutting so far? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm asking him, I'm telling him, I want this, and Lord, I want that. But the Bible says in Matthew 23, I mean, uh, Matthew 25, verse 23, if you're faithful over a few things, I will make you what? I will make you rulers over many. I will make you rulers over many. And we want to be rulers over many without being faithful over the few first. You have to be faithful at this level that he has you at right now. A lot of people squirming in the seats already. Let us rejoice and be what? And be glad. And give him what? Glory. See, this was Lucifer's problem. Because he didn't want the glory to go to the Father. He wanted the glory to come to him. Uh -huh. And a lot of us want the glory to come for ourselves. And that's the problem. Jesus said in John 8, verse 54, If I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. If I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. How do I bring glory to the Father while I'm here on this earth? The Bible says in John 17, verse 4, I brought glory to you here on earth by doing everything you told me to do. Verse 5, and now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. All right. I brought glory to you here on earth by doing everything you told me to do. My obedience is what brings glory to the Father. Amen. Stay with it. Stay with it. To obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of around. 1 Samuel 15, 22. Is this making sense to y'all? Yeah. Yes, sir. For the wedding of the Lamb has what? Come. Has come. And his, let's go to the next. And his bride has made herself what? Ready. Yeah. His bride has made yeah. has made herself ready. Yeah, yeah. Stay with it. April 12th, 2014. That is our anniversary. I got scared. I didn't I thought I was a few days off. <laughs> I know the feeling. Bro. Lord, you, you just showed me. You just showed me you know the feeling. <laughs> I'm going back with you today. You're playing. Stay with it. April 12th, 2014. All right. I got all kind of thoughts going through my mind. I'm standing at the altar, and I watch my bride come. It seemed like the longest walk 
that I'd ever seen in my life. I'm sitting up here, man, my palms sweating, my knees shaking. I said, oh, Lord, David, I was, I was nervous, man. I'm, I watched her walk, and as soon as she's walking, I'm fighting back tears. But as she's walking, the enemy is messing with my mind. Don't do this. You're not ready for it. Don't do, nuh -uh. you're not, you're not, you're not prepared for this. You're still too young. You still need to go out there and have fun. You still got, you still got so much life to live. Yeah. Not realizing that if I would have forfeited that phase of my destiny, I wouldn't be where I am today. Amen. So what I had to do in the midst of those situations, I had to push past the distractions. Yeah. Yeah. I had to push past what the enemy was telling me. And as soon as my bride comes up, I got to muster up strength. And I didn't realize that my bride was just as scared as I was. Because her head, the man asked for the hand and she said, I'm going to go But the was in there, hold on. So her hand's shaking, my hand's shaking, and all I could do was calm down. We're going to be okay. And she said, okay, okay, okay. Like, look, if you want to cop out, man, we can, we can, we can prolong it for a few months. Oh, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. But if you would have told me, if you would have told me in the middle of us coming together that, that, that we would have to face death, if you would have told me in the middle of us coming together that we would have to face the persecution that we faced, if you would have told me that in the midst of us coming together that we would have to go through the hardships, the difficulties, and the frustrations, I would have never believed you. But see, we were stronger together. Come on. We were stronger together, not individual, because no one man is an island. Come on. The Bible says that one can send a thousand a flight, but two can send ten thousand a flight. Yeah. 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 Deuteronomy 32, verse. Stay with me. That's exponential. Yeah. That's exponential. So we, so, 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 so we standing, we standing at this altar, and as soon as she looks at me and I look at her, and we both say, I do, it was like a weight dropped off of us. Yes, sir. And we knew that we was ready to take on the world together. Not individually, but together. together. And the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Yes, that's sir. right. Psalm 34, verse 19. Yes, many, that's an unspecified number. It never said how many afflictions you were going to go through. Right. Yeah. I heard somebody say it like this. You're either in a storm, coming out of a storm, or getting ready to go into a storm. Yes, sir. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. Yeah. Acts 27 verse 20. See, that's the problem. That's the problem. We don't want to go through hardships. We don't want to go through the difficulties. We don't want to go through these, through these things that's going to scar us up and bruise us. But it's your bruises that make you who you are. Don't deny those. To, and they overcame him, hallelujah, by the blood of the lamb and the what? And the word of their testimony. Revelation 12 verse 11. It's your testimony. That's what's going to get you ready. It is making sense to y'all this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I want you guys to go to Matthew chapter 3. Let's go to Matthew chapter 3. And we're going to start at verse 1. We're going to start at verse 1. Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. Hallelujah. In those days, John the Baptist, or John the Baptizer, came doing what, you guys? The word preaching, watch this, you guys. The word preaching means to be a herald. When I'm a herald, that means that the herald always went before the people. He declared the people's decrees, and the people had to listen, or it was off with their head. He went before the king at all times. Now, John the Baptist was the herald for God's first coming. We're the heralds for his second coming. Amen. Is this making sense to you guys? Yeah. Yeah. In, the, in the desert, oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, hold on, hold on, y'all. Hold on. Yes, sir. John the Baptist, he came preaching in the what? Yes. In the Have you ever had a situation to where God calls you to preach and you know, you know it was a deserted area. And you talking to that person, it seems like you talking to a wall. Everywhere you go and you trying to minister to an individual, I ain't trying to hear all that. Yes, I ain't trying to, that's a desert. Yeah. That's a wilderness. Oh, oh y'all hear me this one, man? I ain't, no, what? I ain't trying to hear that. That's a deserted area, a wilderness area. Yeah, yeah. But he said, be, he said, preach the word. Yeah. Be prepared in season and out of season. Yeah. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Yeah. 
Second Timothy, Timothy 4, verse 2. Is this making sense to y'all? In the desert of Judea. Let's go to the next verse. And singing, repent. Now, you mean to tell me you're going to send me to the desert with the message of repentance. But I can't take all that ends a little bit farther. I can't tell them what they want to hear just a little bit so they could be my friend. Watch it, watch it. So I can, I, I can just give them a little bit, Lord. I, I, let, me, let me tell them something that's going to bring hope to them. You know, I have people say, I ain't going to go over there because he, he preached a hard word. That's what we please, please. I don't want nobody giving me no gummy bears. Come on. Stay with it. Sorry. Amen. Sorry. And this is the way he wired me. Have I now become your enemy because I'm telling you the truth? Galatians 4, verse 16. I got to bring the word of God without compromise. But everything is done in love. Y'all don't walk around here feeling bashed because I'm giving you Bible to back up everything that's going on. And the carnal mind is not going to be able to understand spiritual things because they're, un they're unfamiliar to it. They even told Jesus, man, this is a hard word. Who can accept it? John 6, verse 6. He turned to his disciples and said, man, look, y'all want to go? go too? <laughs> Saying, repent. Change the way that you've been trying to think for the what? For the kingdom of heaven is near. Now watch this, watch this. Let's break it down a little bit. Everybody say teach. teach. Let's break this down a little bit. Now have you been reading scripture and you always saw kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, and the kingdom? Yeah. And have you ever realized, like, dang, Lord, what's the difference between the three? Right. See, this is why you got to stop and you have to study the word of God. Yeah. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly right. dividing the word of truth. Yeah. 2 Timothy chapter 2, Stay verse 15. Right. The kingdom of heaven is different than the kingdom of God. Yeah. The kingdom of God is different from the kingdom. Yeah. The kingdom of heaven is a geographical location. Yeah. Matthew 6, verse 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's a geographical location. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And then I have the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the nature of God, the very essence of who he is. The kingdom of God is not ushered in by visible signs. You can't say here it is or there it is. For the kingdom of God is within you. Luke 17, verse 21. And then you have the kingdom, which is God's rule, his governmental order that's established on this earth for you. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Uh, Luke 12, verse 32. Is this making sense to you guys? Yeah. That is the difference between the three. Right. Hallelujah. So when you're reading the Bible, that's how you're able to distinguish the three of them. Is that making sense to y'all? Yeah. Everybody say God is faithful. Right. The heaven is near. Let's go to the next verse. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the, in the wilderness. Go to the next verse. Else here in the wilderness or the desert. Pre what does that say? Prepare. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. Make straight paths for him. Prepare the way of the Lord. Are you preparing the way of the Lord at your work, at your workplace? Yes, sir. Wherever you are, you have to be preparing the way of the Lord. Yeah. You have to cry loud and spare not. And don't be afraid to share your faith because you never know what you're going to be tested with. Is this making sense to you guys? Yes. Now, now, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible says, the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, physical exercise has some value, but spiritual exercise is much more important because it promises a reward in both this life and the next. I said that to say this. There's a man by the name of LeBron James. Raise your hand if you ever heard of him before. A man by the name of LeBron James. Do you know that he spends $1.5 million on his body every year? $1.5 million on his physical body. How much are you exercising your spirit, man? Because you can look like Arnold Schwarzenegger externally, but internally you can look like Elmer Fudd. See, it's not about the edge. A man looks at the outward appearance, but yeah. God looks at the first ten, uh, first uh, Samuel sixteen verse seven. It's about the internal. Yeah. I don't care how much kale you drink or eat. I don't care how much, how many, uh, uh, I don't care how many uh, carrots and all that different stuff you eat. You have a date with destiny, and you gonna have to die right. eventually. Right. You can't take any shots to prolong your your your, your appointment. It is, appointment, it is appointed unto man once to die, and after that is judgment. Yeah. Hebrews 9, verse 27. So you can't get up out of it. And the Bible says, watch this, in, in, in Proverbs 9, verse 11, through wisdom, your days will be many, and years will be added to your life. Yeah. It didn't say through working out. <laughs> yeah. 
It said through wisdom, your days will be many and years will be added to your life. Yeah. Wisdom, the application, applying it to your everyday life. That's what's going to prolong your life, your days on this earth. Teach us how to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Are y'all getting enough Bible? Yeah, stay with it. Psalms 90 verse 12. <clears throat> now, I want to I hit here real quick. I want to hit here real quick. Um, let's go to... Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. However, as it is written, no eye has what? has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived or imagined what God, let's go to the next, has what, you guys, has prepared for those who what? Love him. So he has, he has something prepared only for those who love him, though. The man who loves God is known by God. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2. The man who loves God is known by God. Let's go to the next verse. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. Let's go. The spirit. Is that capital letter S or lowercase letter S? That's a capital letter S. The spirit, the Holy Spirit, searches all things, even the what? Even the deep things of God. For who among men knows? Now watch this. Watch this. Go back real quick. Go back real quick. The deep things. Everybody say the deep things. See, in order for me to be ready, that means that I'm going to have to go deeper in the things of God. I can't be a service level Christian. The Bible says in Psalms 42, verse 7, that deep calls unto deep at the noise of your water spout. Deep calls unto deep. And that word deep, it means subterranean. It's water that comes from out of the ground. It's subterranean wells. Deep calls, calls, that's a voice that comes directly from the Father, calls unto deep at the noise of your water spout. That word water spout means to be a covert or a conduit. And God has called us to be conduits in this earth realm for him. Not jugs, but conduits. Whatever the Father says, we're supposed to be saying that same thing back into this earth realm. Being a conduit for him. He blessed Abraham to be a blessing. Uh, Genesis 12, verse 3. Is this making sense to y'all? Yes, sir. I'm called to be a conduit for the Father. A conduit for him. Um, when, I, uh, when I first started reading the Bible, I didn't study to become a preacher. I studied to live, and my teaching came from my living. And one thing that you have to understand is that if you're looking for revelation just to say, oh, let me go up here and preach, or let me go tell somebody, that's the wrong motive. Because when you're reading the Word of God, when you're eating the Word of God, it has to be personal. And it has to be about you and your yeah. personal relationship with the Father. Yeah. So when you study to teach, you don't study to teach. I mean, excuse me, when you study, when you study the word of God, you're studying to live on a daily basis because it's, 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 it's your daily. Give us this day our daily. It's your daily bread. And that's what you have to be devouring on a daily basis. That's what matters the most. It ain't about you rushing to Facebook to try to say something. Revelation builds. We grow in God as he reveals himself to us. That's how you grow. I told y'all the story about Caleb once before. I told y'all the story about him. I, I, when he was a little younger, I told him, I said, Caleb, don't touch that stove because it's hot. It's hot. One day he was, he was so curious. He saw the stove and he walked over there and he, I said, Caleb, don't touch it. Don't do it. And he waited till I turned my back. He said, all right, all right. I said, yep. Yeah. I said, you put your hands on it. See, I could tell him all day long, but it wasn't until he experienced it for himself. Right. And then he started walking by and he said, Daddy, hot hot. I said, Yeah, hot hot. So I bet you won't put your hand on it now, will you? <laughs> because now he has the scars from it. Now he understands how hot it really and truly is. We grow through revelation. I can tell you all day long, but it's not until you get in the fire. Yeah, right. Is this making sense to y'all? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Let's go to um let's go to uh <laughs> so much I overstudy. Let's go to Amos 9. <laughs> Huh? Let's go to Amos chapter nine. Go there in the uh, in the uh, message translation. <laughs> God, I love your word. God, I love your word. Amos chapter nine. Let's go there in the uh, verse thirteen in the message translation.
Everybody say yes and need. Yes, indeed. Won't be long now. God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast. You're, let's go to the next. Your head will swim. Wow. One thing fast on the heels of the other. You won't be able to keep up everything. Let's go to the next. Everything will, uh, will be happening at once. And everywhere you look, blessings. Everybody say blessings. blessings. Like wine pouring off. Let's go to the next. The mountains and hills. Everybody say, I receive that. I receive that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like, go, 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 back, go back real quick. Go back real quick. Go back real quick. Hallelujah. God, I bless your name. Watch this. Watch this. He said, blessings like wine pouring off of the hills, off the mountains. I, uh, I love to study things out. So, so I kind of went and I looked at the most expensive wine in the world. Hallelujah. <laughs> I went and looked at the I went and looked at the most expensive wine and it's called a screaming eagle. Called a screaming eagle, 1992 Cabernet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And guess how much it costs? It costs $5,000 a bottle. $5,000 a bottle. Boy, and, 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 and watch this, it costs $5,000 a bottle, uh, $5,000 a bottle because the older the wine, the more expensive it is. Yeah. The older the wine, the more rich and more pure it is. All right. See, we want these fly by night blessings. Come on. See, when he talks about things happening so fast, your head is gonna swim. They don't know the process you had to go through to get Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> you were ready a long time ago. You were preparing yourself a long time ago for what's about to happen. So don't get mad. They can't get mad at you when you just build a house from ground up. Come on. Oh my God. Oh my God. They can't, they can't get mad at you when they see the paper tags and you got the brand new car. They can't, they can't get mad at you when they see that you got the promotion on the job. They don't know what you have to go through to get it. You want another person's hand, but as soon as you step foot in their shoes, I promise you, you're going to fall right where you stand. He she, she, he the son of Zebedee. Son of Zebedee. His mom came up to him. Came up to him. Matthew chapter 20, verse 20, he said, man, grant that one of my sons said at your right hand or your left. And Jesus said, man, look, <laughs> you don't even know what you're asking me. <laughs> he said, it ain't mine to grant. He said, but are they willing to drink the cup that I am? <laughs> and, and, that's, and that's what you had to ask a lot of people. Are they willing to drink the cup that you drank from? Are they willing to go through the situations that you went through? Are they willing to go through these things? For our light and momentary afflictions are achieving for us an eternal reward that far outweighs them all. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17. This is making sense to y'all. Yeah. Fast. It's going to happen fast. It's going to happen fast, but you don't realize the process that that person had to go through. And I'm ready now. Everybody say, I'm ready now. I'm ready, I'm ready now. I'm ready now. I'm ready now. I'm ready now. I'm going to watch this. Watch this. I'm going to hit y'all with some stuff. Let's go to 1 Timothy. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3. And we're going to start at verse 5. Start at verse 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are y'all getting talked this morning? Yes, sir. Good, good, good. 1 Timothy chapter 3, and we're going to start at verse 5. If anyone does not, everybody say this is for leadership. leadership. I believe that I've ministered some leaders. I've pastored some leaders in here. Watch this. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's? Go to the next. God's church. Let's go to the next verse. He must not be a recent convert, or he may become conceited and fall under the same. Let's go to the next. Judgment as the devil. Stop right there. What judgment was that? The judgment of pride. 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 See, see, see. And the reason why I brought you here is because there's a lot of people who think they're ready when they're really not. Yes, sir. Just because you can quote a scripture and because you can break a few things down, that don't mean you're ready. I promise you. That, mm -mm, no, 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 no. Preaching come a dime a dozen. I do. As I stand here, I'm not the best preacher in the world. I just try to connect to the Father in everything that I do. I try to live a life that's pleasing and acceptable to him, but I do not, I do not tell my, myself to have apprehended. Every time I stand up here, I am up here empty so that he can fill me up and give y'all exactly what y'all need. Is that making sense to you? Now watch this. Everybody say leadership. leadership. See, now in leadership, there's some, there's, 
there's a specific little a little animal, a reptile that you gotta watch out for, and that's a snake. Everybody say a snake. I'm going here for a reason. I'm going here for a reason. I'm going here for a reason. And there's different types of snakes. Everybody say the first snake. The first snake is the cobra snake. It's leadership. This is leadership. This is leadership. This is leadership. And the first snake that you have to watch out for is the cobra snake. The cobra snake is very prideful. Very, very prideful. They walk around with their chest broke down. And the Bible says in Romans 12, verse 3, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to. They think they know as everybody say sophomore. 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 The word sophomore, watch this, is where we get the word soft is where we get the word sophisticated from. More is where we get the word fool from. Sophomore. You're a sophisticated fool. You know a whole lot of you know a whole lot of nothing and a little bit of something. A wise fool. That's what they come, that's what sophomore comes from. That's where that word comes from. Very prideful. If anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Galatians 6, verse 3. Is this making sense to y'all? Yes, sir. Everybody say the second snake. Second. The second snake in ministry is the coral snake. Everybody say a coral snake. Coral. This is the most beautiful, but also the most dangerous. Black and yellow killer. Mm. They're very flamboyant. You get mesmerized by their beauty. Wow, look at how they can quote them scriptures. Man, look at how they can pray. Oh my God, look at how this person can kind of just walk through, walk through these, these things in the Bible and stuff like that. But the Bible says that charm is deceptive and beauty fades. Proverbs 31, verse 30. Is this helping somebody this morning? Woo-wee. Everybody say the third snake. The third snake is the copper head. They get their names from their copper red heads. You got to watch out for red heads. They rebuttal and they're unteachable. They rebuttal and they're unteachable. The Bible says, don't waste your breath on fools, for they would despise the wisest advice. Proverbs 23, verse 9. Very hot-headed. If you tell them something, mm. <laughs> I'm gritting them teeth. Y'all remember that offense? And the Bible says that a brother offended is harder to be one than a fortified city. <sighs> Proverbs 18, verse 19. Y'all ready for the next snake? The next snake, watch this. The next snake is the rattlesnake. They're the most common they're the most common amongst, excuse me, they're the most common poisonous snake in America. Two things have rattlers. Snakes. Snakes and babies. See, these are the people who try to rush into it too fast. And that's a lack of maturity. They're a novice. These are your know-it-alls. Yeah, but you know you're supposed to, you know, right here, this is what this, yeah, I know, I know, I know, mm -hmm, I know, I know. Everybody say they're not ready. They think they are, but they're not ready. You got to be perfect. And not only in leadership, this is going to be your child at home too. This is going to go for people that's on the workplace, whatever the situation is. You take these principles and you apply those and make sure that you're not one of them. You got to test this thing and make sure that this Bible is a mirror and not a window. Because a mirror is going to always show you your reflection and not somebody else's. Amen. Is this making sense to y'all? Hallelujah. 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 Now watch this. Um, we, were, uh, we were in, in Houston. We were in Houston. And we, we used to go to Houston a lot for, uh, for Tavi to take pictures and stuff like that, man. And I'm, you know, I, I ain't really, really, she wanted to do it, so, you know. I would say that each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. So I had to, Philippians 2 4, I had to, had to, had to, had to, had to, had to look at other people's interests. So I'm, I'm like, golly, man. And I mean, so, 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 so we ended up going out to it. So it was a park, right? Some type of park we ended up going to. Huh? What was it? What was it, is it called Memorial Park? Okay, so we end up going out to the park, man, and um, and I mean, boy, the dude comes up with his with his camera, and before he could say anything, Tommy was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, before before he could say anything, Tommy was just in mode. She was ready. <laughs> she just she giving it to him, and I'm like, man, this girl here's so doggone ready. She must have had it in her mind the night before when she was going to do it. That was one of the most smoothest photo shoots I've ever seen in my life because she already was, pre she was prepared in her mind. What was about to tell you, he didn't even have to tell her what to do. 
She's standing out on trash trucks. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, well, y'all are messy. She was standing on top of all kinds of stuff. I'm like, man, this girl here is doing her thing, man. And I saw right there that she was a natural at what she was doing. See, see, all you have to do is get on fire and be prepared. I heard somebody say it like this. That proper preparation prevents poor performance. <sighs> proper preparation prevents poor performance. Let me say that one more time. <laughs> Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Are right. oh, y'all hear me? Amen. So if I'm preparing, that's the highest act of faith. That's the highest act of faith because I'm already dotting my eyes and I'm crossing my T's. And whenever it happens, it's going to No, this ain't nothing that just... Hey, I've been preparing for this. I heard the story of a, of a minister. Everybody say true story. True story. I heard the story of a minister. He said, man, when he was in one city, he was in a city, man, and on... He said, man, he couldn't, he couldn't, his church did not grow beyond, man, what, 10, 10 to 20 people. He said, and he was doing it for years, years. But then one day God gave him the green light to go to another city. He like, Lord, man, I'm, I'm, I'm already established. I've been here for I don't know how many years. And he was like, Lord, nevertheless, that's your word. So he ended up going to this next city. And as soon as he set out flyers and things like that, he's like, man, I'm, I'm setting stuff up. And I didn't really, I ain't even really expect too much. I just know that God told me to be here. He never had a ministry that went beyond 15 to 20 people. He said his first service, whenever he went to the next city that the father told him, 1,500 people showed up. Wow. 1,500 people ended up showing up because of his obedience. See, David was behind closed doors. He was behind closed doors fighting the lion and the, and, and the bear. See, see, Goliath was the public display. And a lot of people look at, a lot of people look at what's taking place publicly, and they don't know the things that you have to go through privately. Amen. Amen. They don't know the fight and the struggle and the deliverance that you gotta go through behind closed doors. Amen. Stay with it. See, 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 you don't know the nights. I had to ball up and cry. And I'm dry heaving. The Bible says they wept until they had no tears. <laughs> he said, day and night I have only tears for who, while my enemies continually taunt me, saying, where's this God of yours? See, people, people don't know that. When I, when, I was, when I was in a situation to where I got so depressed that I almost gained close to 50 pounds. Because it wasn't even the outsiders that were doing it. It was church people that were talking about me. Watch it. It wasn't outsiders. No, no, no. It was people who were supposed to be under the blood. Stay with it. That boy lost his mind. If you go up there, that's a cult. Don't fool with that. Stay with it. But I had to stick with the script. I had to stay with what I know the Father told me to do. And I didn't realize that all of that was developing tough skin. Yeah. Yeah. All of that was building something on the inside of me. And I didn't even realize it. Yeah. Stay with it. And in the midst of it, it was shaving on people pleasing. And now I could care less what an individual thinks about me. As long as I glorify the Father, because that's what matters the most. Amen. And a lot of y'all can't be prepared. A lot of y'all are not ready because you're still worried about what your mama thinks. You're still worried about your family. You're still worried about what this other person or this other church or these other people have to say. Everybody say, I got to break free. I got to break free. Be you. Be you. Be you, because that's the only way God will never, ever, ever anoint a duplicate. He will never anoint a copycat. He always anoints the original. Yeah. 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 Stay with it. Stay David with it. tried walking. Hallelujah, Miss Linda. David tried to walk in King Saul's armor, and he took a few steps, and he said, I can't go in these. I can't go in these. I have to go with what I'm accustomed to. Yeah. I have to go with what I'm accustomed to yeah. because that's what the Lord is going to anoint me with. Yeah. Yeah. So he took off Saul's armor and he got his sling. Yeah. And he got his stones. Yeah. And that's how he was able to take off Goliath. Yeah. Because the same thing that he was fighting with uh, privately, that's what God used publicly to display his glory. Yeah. It's just making sense to y'all. Oh, man. Oh, man. Can y'all handle a little bit more? Can y'all handle a little bit more? Let's go to Matthew 24. <laughs> Let's go to Matthew 24. God, I love your word. Matthew chapter 24. Let's go to verse 36. Matthew 
Matthew 24, verse 36. Let's read a little bit. Everybody say, no one knows. No one knows. About that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son. Everybody say, Jesus. Jesus. But only the, let's go to the next, only the Father. Yeah. Only, only the Father. I want you to look your neighbor straight in the eye and tell him, learn how to keep a secret. Learn how to keep a secret. Talk too much. Turn the tongue down. Facebook, y'all, y'all be quiet. Talking and going on. Don't pass your pearls to what? Oh, no, I'm ready, y'all. Come on, I come, come on over here. And you don't realize when you realize, man, you you, you got people who are who are privately envious of you. They walk around looking at me. Mm -hmm, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I see you. <laughs> God is good, ain't he? <laughs> and don't realize, boy, it's like a, 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 a case of knives when they look at you. Well, if, if knives can come out their eyes, it'll, it'll pin you to the wall. Third John. Verses 13 and 14 says it like this. I have, much to write, I have much to write you, but I do not want to do so with pen and ink. I hope to see you soon and we will talk face to face. Yeah. Stop putting so much on social media. Yeah. I have much to write you, but I do not want to do so with pen and ink. I hope to see you soon and we will talk face to face. Yeah. When was the last time you had a face to face conversation with somebody? Y'all yeah. got internet thugs. <laughs> but y'all strong, y'all strong on that internet, man. But when was the last time you sat down and had an intellectual conversation with an individual? Where y'all were able to kind of back, go back and forth with each other, to challenge each other mentally. That's what it's about. Sometimes you gotta push the gidges and gadgets out the way so that you can be able to comprehend and respond situations. Because if I send a text message right now with an exclamation mark, somebody think I'm ready to fight. Because <laughs> I'm understanding man. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> oh, we fight? <laughs> y'all know, know I'm telling the truth. Have y'all ever had somebody, have y'all ever had a misunderstanding like that because somebody sent you an exclamation mark? Yeah. <laughs> boy, I am down y'all straight this morning, boy. Good Lord. When we, when we first said that, why are you yelling at me? Yes. Nobody yelling? I'm in dudes right now. But you never sit down to talk with an individual about a situation. Boy, good Lord. <laughs> she can't take it. <laughs> it's just making sense to y'all this morning. I have much to write, but I don't know what to do so with pen and ink. I hope to see you soon, and we will talk face, face to face. Face to face. Oh, I go to the next one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As it was in the days of Noah. Yeah, yeah. So it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Man. Yeah. Go to the next verse, you guys. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and doing what? And giving in marriage. So you mean to tell me it was a wedding ceremony up until the day of the flood, Mama Thelma? It was a wedding ceremony. The, 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 the minister, the pastor is up there getting ready to give somebody away. The father is ready to give his daughter away. And before you know it, oof, it came. Just like that. Because they weren't prepared. Because they weren't ready. Up to the day Noah entered the ark. Let's go to the next verse. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all where? Away. away. Stop right there. Took them all away. I love having conversations with my family when it's off the cuff. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't planned out. It ain't mapped out. We just get in this Bible. We just start getting in the Word and we just start bouncing off of each other. So the other night, me, Shawana, and Tavi, we're sitting down and we're talking. And, and, uh, and, and, and the topic of strip clubs came up. Yeah, I talk real to my family. That topic, that topic ended up coming up. And I said, do you know? I said, dude, do you know as soon as you step foot in a place like that, you just, you just damage your standards? 
You just lowered your standards when you step foot in a place like that. And I said, do you know that it, was, it will be like in the days of Noah? There are going to be people in the strip club when he come back. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There are going to be people in the crack house when he comes back. There are going to be people doing all of the things that, that, that bring about self-gratification when he comes back. And, and, and what is your excuse going to be? Where is he going to find you when he comes back? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Where is he going to find you? What is he going to find you looking at when he comes back? What is he going to find your hand in when he comes back? Stay with him. See, you, ne you never, ever, ever know. The Bible says that, that, that one is going to be taken away and the other one is going to be left here. And the people's hearts are still going to be so hard that they're still not going to repent. Yeah. My Lord, my God. Stay with it. He's going to send a hailstorm. He's going to send hailstorm with, 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 the, with the stones of uh, 100 pounds that's dropping on people. And they're still going to be pointing fingers at them and cursing them. Yeah. Revelation 16, verse 20, I believe that is. Stay with it. Stay is this making sense to y'all this morning? Yes, sir. Yes. Everybody say, I have to be ready. I have to be ready. Watch this. They have something. They have something. And I have to pull this out because Gerald pulling it from me. They have something called first blood. Everybody say first blood. First blood. blood that kind of teaching, man. And something called first blood. And what they would do with first blood, they would, this is what they would do whenever they would start training dogs. They would take out a beagle or they would take out a bloodhound. And what they would do with first blood was they would send this dog out with all of the other hounds. And the dog did not know where they were running to. They had no idea what was happening. But they just tried to keep up with the pack. Hallelujah. And, and, and as soon as one of the older beagles grabbed a hole to a fox or some other animal that they were going out to hunt, the hunters would get off of their horses and they would get the blood from that fox or from that animal and they would smear it on that young beagle. And as soon as they smeared it on the young beagle, that beagle started to taste the blood. And he knew from that point on until the rest of his life, that was the scent that he was going after. He was going after the first blood. He was going after it. See, at first he wasn't ready. But as soon as he tasted the first blood, now I know that when I'm going out there, I have an intended target to hit. Everybody say first blood. First blood. When was your first time you was introduced to first blood? Because the Bible says, oh, taste and see. <laughs> Blessed is the man who trusted him. Psalm 34, yeah. verse 8. Because the first time I encountered him, that was my first blood. Yeah. Hallelujah. The first, time I, the first time I came encountered with his presence, yeah. I'm standing in line. I said, man, you know what? I'm going to see if this stuff is real. And then before you know it, I'm trying to grab myself. Boom! Because I hit the ground. And I was like, Lord, whatever that is, give me more of it. Yeah. Give me more of it. And I don't care what anybody thinks about this. Because when I have an encounter, that's totally different than having a church service. Amen. <laughs> when you have an encounter with the Father, and you know that he's pulling things out of you, and somebody is confirming that only you deal with in him in the secret place, and somebody bring your heart back, and you know, Father, that's nobody but you, because there was nothing but my thoughts. I never even spoke. Yes, 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 yes. And that right there lets you know that Jesus is real. Yes. We used to have a song when we was younger. Love it. Jesus is real. I know the Lord is real to me. Come on, y'all. I'm telling you, man. That was the song that we used to sing, man. Hey, hey. Jesus is real. I know the Lord is real to me. And that's it. And I'm saying that. And that was the song that we used to sing when we were younger. And everybody say, Jesus is real. Jesus is real. Y'all praise God if y'all got something to say. Hallelujah. 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 Everybody standing with us. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you so much for each and every person that's under the sound of my voice. I thank you for your word that has went forth. And I thank you that your people, Father, will be prepared for everything that you send their way. We bless you and we thank you, Father, for, for, for the individuals that are through these airways that are delving into your word, Father, that are getting back to your presence. So that they can see you the way that you're supposed to be seen. 
I come against the religiosity. I come against anything that doesn't line up with your word or your will, Father, for their lives. And I say right now that anybody who is rebuttaling against you and they're fighting and they're pressing and they're going through the mud right now, Father, that you provide a sense of peace and direction for them, God. Your word says that your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So light the way for them, Father, and change the trajectory of the lifestyle that they're living. And those who don't know you, those who, who need to rededicate their lives, I just believe by faith that they have a divine encounter with you and they come back with submitted and, sub, and subservient hearts, ready to serve the vision that you've set in place. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen. Now y'all praise God here for God's